Hello, I'm Xenophair, and I like to review older PC parts to see how they stack up in modern games. First up, it should come as absolutely no surprise that I'm actually a bit of a fan of AMD processors, and have been since the days of the old Phenom 2s. The combination of price and performance won me over back in the day, and my first gaming PC consisted of a dual-core Phenom X2550 that I picked up for about 50 quid, and I really enjoyed using it. Since that PC, I have had various processors power my PC over the years, in fact, up until recently I used a Core i5-9400F for my main PC gaming needs, but that started getting a bit long in the tooth on the release of Helldivers 2, and I came across an opportunity to start again with AMD when I swapped out a few old PC parts I had with a friend to get on the AM4 platform for cheap. Since then I've also built PCs based on AMD for others in my household, and I'm now in a position where the three main PCs in daily use are all AMD based, on top of this, I use another AMD machine for recording footage and for my channel, and I have AMD in the form of a handheld PC, namely the Legion Go, which is based on the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. I'm a fan of the performance price of AMD, and I've got a fair bit of actual time under my belt for the platform now as well. I'm an even bigger fan of the AM4 platform, which I believe might actually be the best CPU platform ever made. Its compatibility and feature set have been absolutely incredible from a consumer standpoint. Cheap, reliable and feature-packed, it truly is an exceptional CPU platform, and on a personal note, I absolutely love working with AM4. Today, I'll be taking a look at one of the first Ryzen's ever released. In this case, the Ryzen 3 1200, released in 2017 and featuring 4 cores and 4 threads at 3.1 GHz. This is an AMD CPU that I simply had lying around. It has a 65 watt TDP, a reasonable amount of L3 cache, 8 MB, and like to around the £100 mark back in the day. I've purchased an inexpensive B450 motherboard, paired it with 16GB of Corsair DDR4 RAM and an Asus GTX 1050 Ti, and I'm going to run this CPU through its paces. The GTX 1050 Ti feels like quite a fair match for the 1200, both from around about the same time, and both would have also been regarded as budget parts on their respective releases. This is the 4GB Asus version of the 1050 Ti and requires no external power connectors so it pulls all of the power it requires from the motherboard. I had these parts just lying around, but overall you could expect to pay around £100 for these parts, while the Ryzen 1200 can be picked up for around a 10 of these days online. Question is though, should you? And how does this processor fare in 2024? Honestly, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, but let's get started. As always on testing videos, all footage is captured using external hardware so you can get an accurate idea of what kind of performance you can expect under the same conditions without any of the video capture workload being put onto any of the hardware that I'm using. The first game we'll be testing today is Grand Theft Auto V, a 1080p and a combination of high, very high settings, with detail sliders set to around 70%. GTA V was more than playable on the Ryzen 1200, and it maintained a mostly smooth frame rate, with the game hovering around the mid-50s to 60fps the vast majority of the time. It was more than playable, and I don't really have any issues to report of in my hour or so of playing. This is an easy game to test, and it's an easy game to recommend on this hardware. So overall, it's an easy pass. Not much more really needs to be said here. Payday 2 is next. It's an older game, but still plenty popular according to player counts, so it finds itself in my testing setup. 1080p resolution, with all the details set to their respective highest, the Ryzen 1200 and 1050 Ti absolutely trounced Payday 2 with solid frame rates right the way through. The frame rate does vary considerably when unlocked, but I don't recall seeing it drop below 60 in my testing. I use a G-Sync monitor for games as well, so these variations in frame rate were completely undetectable to me. If you're having a problem with it though, cap it to 60fps and you're going to have a great time overall. It's once again a very easy pass for this combination of hardware. Next up is the Division 2. 1080p, low settings, with the resolution set to 75% scale. The Division 2 is where we started hitting issues with the Ryzen 1200. The Division 2 lists an older FX6350 chip as the minimum required CPU. With the Ryzen 3 1200 being a fair bit better than the aging, and honestly not very good, FX6350, you would think we would see okay performance, but the Ryzen 1200 struggled right the way throughout, with the CPU usage hitting 100% almost all of the time. I've used a slightly smoother part of the video here for demonstration, so it does sort of feel like a little bit of a choice cut, but this wasn't a norm in my experience, and I actually couldn't recommend playing the Division 2 like this. There was stuttering, wildly variable frame rates, 
and on several occasions the game completely paused entirely as the 1200 struggled to keep up. This was the first game tested that I would actually regard as unplayable on the 1200. It simply doesn't have the chops to take Keen Run anymore. Red Dead Redemption 2 is next. At 900p on medium settings and using the Vulcan API, the 1200 delivers a playable experience, although it is nothing special to write home about. The game hovered around the 30fps mark most of the time, and it did remain quite playable, but you can see in the footage that the CPU and GPU remain near 100% usage, with the numbers merely changing hands between the two. It was fine, with no issues to report of, in my half hour or so of playing. Saints Row 3 Remastered performed well. At 900p medium settings, the game managed to hold almost 60fps in my playtime with it, and it was a solid experience that performed well enough. Raising the resolution to 1080p on the game did hit the frame rate pretty hard, so even though it looks like we have a little headroom to work with here, I think that 1080p might be a push too far for this combination, and I'd probably say stick to 900p and go for the higher frame rates here. Dying Light was another game that was solid overall. At 1080p high settings, the game managed to stay mostly over 50fps, with the average being around 55 Dying Light is one of those games where I think the frame rate matters, so I would consider dropping either the settings or the resolution a notch to definitely hit 60 FPS. I played Dying Light for a couple of hours, and overall, once again, I didn't have any real complaints. There was no issues to really mention, to be honest. I'm going to move very quickly over to Frostpunk. Frostpunk is definitely one of my current favourites, a survival city builder I can't get enough of at the moment. The 1200 and 1050 Ti did have a decent frame rates at 1080p, very high settings. But I'd argue with some merit that due to the nature of Frostpunk, a 40-ish FPS frame rate is perfectly fine for a game of this style. It's not a Twitch shooter, and I think you'd appreciate the visual fidelity that the higher settings give you. Frostpunk ran well for the entire couple of hours that I was playing, with no issues to report of with this combination of hardware. The Ryzen 3 1200 did an excellent job, and if anything, the 1050 Ti was more the culprit for these slightly lower frame rates here. Fallout 4 Next Gen is next. Running at 1080p in high settings, the 1200 puts in a good shift, although it doesn't quite pull off a flawless experience. When combat starts getting heavy, the frame rate can drop into the high 30s, with a similar frame rate for Diamond City. In more open areas, the frame rate does climb up close to the 60fps target, but again it struggles to stay actually at 60fps, and you'll often find yourself in the mid 50s. It's a perfectly fine performance, but you can see that the 1200 is definitely starting to hold us back here. Our penultimate game today will be The Witcher 3 in DX12 mode. At 1080p and low settings, The Witcher 3 is playable with some caveats. Busier areas will see the frame rate drop sharply as the 1200 can't keep up, but more open areas will see better performance. I played for around an hour without much issue, but the frame rate wasn't particularly steady, and I would possibly suggest maybe capping the game to 30fps to alleviate some of the more significant drops that definitely occurred in the busier areas. It's fine, but it's not perfect, and as long as you understand that going in, then you'll have a perfectly good time at these settings. Our final game for today is Helldivers 2, running at an eye-destroying 720p with all settings set to lowest. This wasn't really too playable. To be fair to Helldivers, the Ryzen 3 1200 is technically below minimum spec, and it does show it in performance. There was significant frame rate drops, stuttering, and a couple of freezes as the 1200 just not stand the bug invasion. I managed to do an entire round, but honestly, it was suffering, and by the end of it, I was afraid that the napalm barrage took me. Overall, it wasn't really a very smooth experience, and I couldn't recommend that you play Helldivers 2 like this. Although, for this instance, I think that seeing is believing. This wraps up my gaming tests for the Ryzen 3 1200. Outside of gaming, the machine also was more than sufficient for video playback at 1080p and web browsing. Overall, I think the SMT, AMD's version of Team Blue's hyperthreading, would help the 1200 significantly, but to play devil's advocate here, 1200 has always been a budget processor, and these are more premium features found in more expensive processors, like the Ryzen 5 series. Can I recommend the 1200 for gaming? There were some good results here, but overall I'd struggle to recommend the Ryzen 3 1200 today. A lot of games tested today did struggle on just 4 cores, especially cores with our SMT, and there's definitely better CPUs available for around the same price point on the AM4 platform. As of recording, the Ryzen 5 1600 can be had for not much more money, and it will deliver significantly better performance for around the same money that ultimately makes it difficult to recommend.
the Ryzen 3 1200 for any serious PC games. If you have an old one lying around, sure, grab something like a 1050 Ti and give it a go. But I wouldn't build a machine to play games on this in 2024, outside of you already having this processor and already using this in the machine. I release an extended playstyle video in the next few days of these games on this hardware. This will be a no commentary video, but will give you longer to look at the performance of the games that I tested today. This has been the Ryzen 3 1200 processor. I've been Zenofir. Thank you for watching.